Hi, Rob here from Handmade Extreme. Rotary phase converters or variable frequency drives. It's a question I keep seeing come up on Facebook groups, web forums, and there seems to be a lot of misinformation out there. So I'm hoping in this video I can break down the pros and cons of each of these two devices and help you make an informed decision about which one of these is the best device to power your workshop. Now before we dive into the pros and cons, let's just have a quick look at how the rotary converter and the VFD work. Now this is just a very brief overview. I had loads of comments after my rotary converter build video for people asking for wiring diagrams and things like that, and it's coming. I'm going to do another video uh, that goes into excruciating detail on how this works. So if you're interested on that, hit the subscribe, keep an eye on the channel, uh, and that's coming, it's on the way. But this is just a brief overview for this video. So the rotary converter, you've got your single phase neutral and live coming in, got a little control box that's got some switch gear and some capacitors and things in, we'll talk about those in the other video. Um, but the essence of it is that you take your single phase live down to a three phase induction motor, this is called the idler motor, that live goes through one of the windings and powers that motor. And then the other two windings generate through induction the missing two phases. So you end up with the live from your supply and two generated lives and your neutral from your supply. Which is really handy because if your machine's got things like a work clamp, uh, that will need a live and a neutral. So that's, that's very handy for that. The VFD, on the other hand, is all done in electronics. There's no moving parts. So you've got your live and your neutral coming in. They're in the form of a single phase sine wave, an AC wave. That then gets converted to DC with a rectifier. So you take your AC, you convert it to DC, and it gets stored and typically in things like capacitors. Um, and then that DC gets chopped around, uh, again, all through the, within the electronics, and converted into three AC sine waves, 120 degrees apart, so that you get your three phases. What you don't get is the neutral. So if you want things like work lamps, you have to do a little bit of additional wiring uh, to get those to, to work. So that's, that's the basics of how the two devices work. Let's have a look at the pros and cons. So we'll start with the rotary converter and with what I think is the biggest pro. You can power more than one motor at a time. So you can have the rotary converter powering a machine and on that machine you can be powering multiple motors. So let's say you've got a milling machine that you want to run a spindle motor, uh, a rapid traverse or a cross feed and a coolant pump. That's three motors. You can power all of them off of the rotary converter at the same time. The next one is that the rotary converter is plug and play. So that means you can power multiple machines off of the same thing. You can have your rotary converter set up with the out feed of the rotary converter just going to a five pin socket on the wall and then you can just plug each of your machines into it in turn. It's like having your own little three phase power station in your workshop. So a couple of the cons are the rotary converter is quite noisy. You've got a separate motor spinning away. They can create quite a bit of vibration because they're out of balance. And uh, that's not, I'm not talking about the, how they work in terms of the capacitors. I mean, physically, um, the, because you're only powering one of the coils and the other two are being used to generate power, the, the motor becomes out of balance and that can generate quite a lot of noise. The cost per unit is quite high. To buy a rotary converter versus buying a VFD, the rotary converter is more expensive. The flip side of that, uh, as we'll get into in a minute, is you only need to buy one of them. And then the final con is offload efficiency. So when you're running your machine, your efficiency can be quite high. The one that powers my workshop, I've got that running about 90% efficiency when it's powering a machine. But once you switch the machine off, you're just wasting electricity to power the rotary converter when it's not doing any useful work. So it's effectively zero efficiency at that point. So let's have a little look at the VFD. So first pro 
is the exact opposite of the, the rotary converter is the operation is basically silent. They do make a little whining noise, but that is going to pale into insignificance compared to the sound of the machine that you're powering the rotary converter with. So effectively, they're silent. The cost per unit of the VFD is actually quite low. You can pick up a small VFD, a uh, kilowatt or so, or a half horsepower, that sort of size, um, for a couple of hundred squid. Um, they're not very expensive, Whereas the rotary converter, you might be spending closer to a thousand squid. Um, this is where it, the water starts to get a little bit more muddy though, because whereas the rotary converter, you can just power everything off of it. With the VFD, you need one motor, uh, sorry, one VFD per motor. So if you've got lots of machines and lots of motors or not many machines with lots of motors on, so let's consider a milling machine where you've got maybe three motors on it that are all three phase. That's three VFDs on that one machine alone. So there's a little bit of a cost benefit analysis that needs to be done there. So next one along, efficiency. VFDs are incredibly efficient. 95% is commonplace, 95% plus is commonplace. Um, and when the motor's not running, the VFD's just on standby, it's basically not using any power at all, uh, unlike the rotary converter that's sitting there at that point at zero efficiency. Now this is the one that comes up a lot, speed control. Variable frequency drive uh, is going to allow you to modulate the speed of a three-phase induction motor. And it does that by changing the frequency, that's what the variable frequency part is. So a motor will spin at a nominal frequency depending on what your supply is. So in the UK it's 50 hertz, that's 50 cycles per second. But you can change that with the variable frequency drive to speed up the motor, higher frequency, slow down the motor, lower frequency. It's a really nice thing to have, but again, you need to ask yourself the question, do I need that? Soft start and stop. So with the VFD, rather than just power on, motor goes, power off motor spins down at its own rate, you can control the rate of acceleration and deceleration of the motor. So if you've got a big machine, for instance, and your supply is not particularly uh, high current, you can bring the motor in slowly to prevent that sudden spike in power surge. Um, so you might be able to run a slightly bigger machine on a supply that wouldn't necessarily be able to support the starting demands of that machine under normal circumstances. Might need it, you might not, that's for you to decide. And then the final one is DC brake. So this is quite a handy one if your machine doesn't have an emergency stop for instance. You could add an emergency stop button to your machine, wire it up to your VFD and when you press it, it will use the, uh, the cleverness of the VFD to inject DC into the motor, uh, which effectively stops your motor instantly. Nice trick. So VFDs are sounding pretty good at this point, so let's just have a little look at some of the cons. As I think I've already mentioned, you've got to have one VFD per motor. So this is where that cost-benefit analysis needs to come in. This is quite an interesting one, that the VFD must be matched to the motor. What do I mean by that? So we just think about the rotary phase converter for a second this is acting like a little power station so as long as the rotary phase converter is big enough to power whatever you're trying to power it'll do it you don't have to really worry about it the VFD you can't use it like a little power station so the VFD has to be connected directly to its motor which kind of goes back to point one here one VFD per motor and the VFD has a maximum and minimum motor rating. So let's say you've got a, a three kilowatt VFD. That will potentially power motors within the range of two to three kilowatts. So you can't go bigger than three and you can't go smaller than two. Now, you might be thinking what you could do with a VFD is wire a VFD to a set of uh, wire the VFD to a socket and put all of your motors on a plug 
and then you can just plug each motor in in turn to the VFD. Theoretically it could work but all of the motors would need to be the same size because the VFD is programmed with the overload settings and the size of the motor and these are all parameters that you go and set up and every time you change the motor you need to go and change those parameters which is a right royal pain in the and then another one is there's no downstream switching so whereas the the rotary converter you can use it like a little power station with the VFD because it's got to be matched to the motor um, and it's one motor per VFD you also can't switch downstream so you can't use it like a little uh, like a little power station you can't wire up two motors to the VFD and then go right I want to use that one now and just switch it over because the way that the internal um, IGBT components work on the VFD what you do is you'll end up damaging the inverter or the, the VFD so uh, no downstream switching unfortunately what that basically means is the VFD has to be wired directly to the motor. You can't have switches and contactors and things in between the VFD and the motor. So hopefully at this point you're starting to think, okay, maybe there isn't a clear cut, they're better than them or they're better than them. It's very much dependent on the application. So let's just consider a couple of scenarios and we can work them through and see which would be better, a, VF, a VFD or a, a phase converter. So let's consider the following possibility. You've got a little workshop at home and you've got a great deal on, let's say, a three-phase drill press and you've got your single-phase supply and it's the only three-phase machine you've got. It's got one motor, it's just a spindle motor, and it's not going to be very powerful. It's maybe half a kilowatt. VFD for that, you're only going to need one unit, it's only one motor, They're quite cheap per, per motor, very efficient, speed control might be really handy because you can, most drill presses have just a belt drive on the top, uh, so rather than changing the belt around to get the different speeds you can just wind it up and down with a little controller, soft start and stop, DC brake, they might all be really nice features to have. You can easily match the motor to the VFD. Downstream switching, not a problem, there isn't going to be any. VFD for that application might be absolutely perfect. Okay, now let's consider a slightly more complicated scenario. So you went to go and look at the drill press, the guy was selling it, and he also had a really nice three-phase lathe for sale, and you got a really great deal and you bought both of them. You've got both of them at home now, and you've got your drill press with its one motor, and you've now got a lathe that's probably got a spindle motor and probably a coolant pump as well. So you're now up to three motors. Okay, so we now need three VFDs and one of them, the one that's probably going to power the spindle on the, the lathe, that's going to need to be quite a big VFD. Now they're quite expensive. So at this point we might be starting to think the rotary converter might be a better option. We only need to buy one of them, so cost-wise, three VFDs versus one rotary converter, we might be looking around a similar sort of ballpark for the money. And the big, big pro at this point is you've just bought a lathe and a drill press. It's not going to be long before you're going to want to add a milling machine as well, is it? And then maybe a surface grinder. So in choosing the rotary phase converter or a phase converter, the static phase converter, you're future-proofing yourself. So you've then got that little power station that you can just, oh, I want to use the drill press now, I'll just plug the drill press in. Great, use it. I want to use the lathe now, right, I'll just plug the lathe in. Great. You don't need to have spent hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands and thousands by this point on multiple VFDs and all the hassle of stripping the wiring out of the machines uh, and rewiring them to accommodate the VFDs. Yes, you do get all of these benefits, but you do need to ask yourself, do I need them? Now let's just consider my workshop. In the workshop I've got a three-phase Harrison VS330 TR lathe. Now 
that's a 2.2 kilowatt lathe, spindle motor, and coolant pump, both three phase. There's Jones and Shipman 540 surface grinder. I can't remember what size the motor is, but it's a single three phase motor, so we're up to three. And then we've got the Bridgeport milling machine. That's got a spindle motor, uh, one and a half horsepower, I think it is, and coolant pump, all three phase. The uh, X traverse on it is 110 volt. Um, it's a bit of an odd one. So that's five motors. So that means I would need five VFDs. Now, I actually use a rotary phase converter. I built one a couple of years ago. There's a video on the channel if you want to go and watch it. And what that allows me to do is have this plug and play feature. I only use one machine at a time because it's only me in the workshop. So that's not a problem. If I ever want to add more machines in the future, I can, it's not a problem. Noise, yeah, it would be nice if it was a bit quieter. Um, but I can always put the idler motor outside or in a little box or something like that to quieten it down. That's, that's not a problem, really. Cost, now, this is an interesting one. My rotary converter that I built um, is, I think it's a, it's a four kilowatt idler motor, and to buy an equivalent unit off the shelf, um, probably about a thousand squid, maybe just a bit more. Five inverters, considering the size of the motors on the machines that I've got, easily would have cost more than a thousand squid. So for me, personally, three machines, phase converter, is a far more efficient option. Now, regarding efficiency, the offload efficiency, yes, is very poor. So when I'm not using it, I switch it off. That's a pretty simple way around that one. Um, now, if we just weigh up the, the options here, the speed control on the VFD is still something that some of you might be thinking, hang on a minute, what about the speed control? Now, I'm in the fortunate position that the Jones and Shipman surface grinder doesn't need speed control. Uh, it's all done on the machine. The Bridgeport is a very speed head machine, so it does it itself. If it, if it was a belt drive head, then maybe a VFD on the spindle might have been a nice thing to have. Um, and the Harrison lathe, again, has got a, a CVT gearbox, so it's got infinitely variable transmission as well. So for my application, personally, I don't get any of these benefits, so I may as well have this because it's cheaper. Okay, so what I'm hoping you're taking away from this is that the choice of rotary phase converter or VFD isn't as simple as just get a VFD, they're better. Yes, they do have a lot of pros to them, but there are some cons, and the cons of the VFD play right into the hands of the pros of the rotary phase converter and vice versa. So what you need to do is take this information and use it to make an informed decision based on the machines that you've got and possibly more importantly the machines that you might get in the future because if you've just got the one machine and you have no intention of ever getting more you might want to be looking at the VFD that's probably going to work out a little bit cheaper and maybe give you a little bit more versatility depending on the machine if you're looking at getting more machines in the future, I would very strongly consider the phase converter um, and just weigh up the pros and cons yourself. I hope I've given you enough information that you can now make an informed decision. Um, I can't give you the exact answer because I don't know your exact scenario. I hope you found that informative and it's gonna help you to make a decision on what's best for you. If you haven't already seen the rotary converter build video, I highly recommend you go and check that out and keep an eye on the channel for the detailed how a rotary converter works. We'll get some wiring diagrams done. We'll go through it. It'll be so dry. It'll be even more boring than this video. Um, but if you're interested in making one, I think it will be absolutely invaluable to you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.